we're going to take a look at QuickTime Broadcaster and how you can use it to wirelessly transmit video throughout your home. For this demonstration, we're going to use two different computers. The first computer is a standard MacBook laptop, which features a built-in iSight camera that we're going to use as the video source for this demonstration. The other computer, which will be receiving the video transmission, can be any computer at all, whether it be a PC, a Mac, or even a Linux machine. As long as it's capable of running some sort of software that can receive streaming video, it will work. And that software could be QuickTime or even VLC Movie Player. The other thing you'll obviously need is a home network. Now, preferably this would be a wireless network so you can transmit the video wirelessly, but a standard wired network would work just fine as well. The final thing you'll need for your Mac is the QuickTime Broadcaster software, which you can download for free from Apple's website. Click on the link in the video description to be taken to an article that has links to all of the various items you may need for this project. Now, once we open up the QuickTime Broadcaster software on our Mac, we're going to have a number of different options under the video menu that we can use for the type of transmission we wish to send. Now you can choose from one of the presets, or do like I've done here and choose the custom option. And within the custom option, there are a number of different settings you can play around with, such as the resolution of the video you wish to transmit, the type of compression algorithm you want to use, here we're using the H.264 algorithm, uh, the bitrate you want to use in order to transmit that information over your network. That sort of information is something which would depend on how fast your network is and what sort of performance you think you'll be able to achieve. Um, the settings I have here are pretty standard that will give you a, a pretty good high quality video from the iSight camera uh, and still work over most home networks. So that might be a good starting point, but feel free to play around with it uh, using your own setup. In the network tab, there are also a number of different options to play around with. On the preset menu, we're going to choose the manual unicast option. This means that we're going to be transmitting the video data stream to one single predefined computer on our network. There are a number of other options you can play around with for transmitting the stream to multiple networks or over the internet, uh, but this is beyond the scope of this demonstration. Within the manual unicast option, we're going to specify the computer that we're going to send the data stream to. Now this is one of the most important parts of the setup because you must enter the exact IP address of the computer you wish to send the data stream to. In this case, this is 192.168.2.101, which is a local address on my home network for the computer that the data stream is going to go to. Finally, before we can begin broadcasting, we're going to go to the File menu, then Export, and then SDP. This is going to allow us to export a very small file that will contain all of the necessary configuration details to receive the video stream on our remote computer. And you can take a look at this file. It actually just contains basic details of what the stream is, where it's coming from, where it's going, and some basic details about the type of video that's being transmitted. That's all it is. You could actually enter all this information manually on the receiving end, but this just saves you the trouble. And that's all we need to do to get everything set up. The only thing that's left is to press the broadcast button located below the video preview window. Now for my test broadcast, I just use this utility ladder to place my laptop in front of my TV, which I'm going to broadcast elsewhere into the house. The receiving computer is a PC running Windows Vista that's located elsewhere in the house at the network address that we specified earlier in the setup procedure. This computer will already have had QuickTime software already installed, which is freely available from Apple's website. All I need to do is place the SDP file that we created earlier on the desktop and then double click the file. And so here is a screen capture of the PC as we double click on the file. QuickTime will immediately open up and begin streaming the video from the computer that created this SDP file. There's the video streaming from the iSight camera across the wireless network to the PC elsewhere in the house. Now, I apologize for the slightly jagged nature of the video here of the screen capture. Rest assured that in real life, this is all very smooth and uh, 30 frames per second. It's actually much better than what you're seeing here in the video. But there we can make it full screen right there on the PC. You're seeing uh, the video. You can make it back to a small video that you can stick up in the corner of your screen. And uh, there it is. It's a fun thing to play around with. Here I'm just using it to watch television from elsewhere in the house, but there's a lot of other things that you could do with it. 
Just to show one alternative use, if you don't want to use QuickTime for some reason on the receiving computer, this is the uh, freely available VLC movie player. Uh, we're just going to open up a window and then drag that file we created earlier into VLC movie player. And boom, there you go, the video immediately starts playing. Again, on the video here, the frame rate's pretty poor, but trust me that in real life, it's uh, 30 frames per second, uh, very good quality video. Um, once again, you can shrink it, put it in the corner of your screen. Uh, if you want to, you could uh, make it full screen again. Uh, you can basically do whatever you want with it. So again, here I've just been using it to transmit a TV signal from one part of the house to another over our wireless network. But for example, you could also set up a video camera in a nursery and keep an eye on the baby from your office. Uh, also, I should note that here I've been using the iSight camera that's built into the Mac, which is perfectly fine, but not the highest resolution of video cameras. Uh, but you can very easily attach your own video camera through the FireWire cable into your Mac and use that as your video source instead. That concludes this tutorial. Uh, please either leave comments in this video or visit our website at flightsimulationguru.com to tell us about your own experiences with QuickTime Broadcaster and anything that you've managed to use it for, or if you have any questions, perhaps somebody will be able to answer it for you. So again, please check out flightsimulationguru.com. There's a link in the video's description. Also, you might want to check out our sister website, Femtimal.com, which is more science-oriented and features more uh, science-related articles and hopefully in the near future some science videos as well. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please consider subscribing and we'll see you back here again soon.